this episode, we're checking out one of the largest industrial ruins we've ever explored, a massive German coal mine that shut down over a decade ago. While the underground workings are no longer accessible, there are plenty of surface structures to explore, some of them standing over 200 feet tall. Now, join us as we venture inside and discover what remains. This video is sponsored by Audible. Go to audible.com slash proper people or text the code proper people to 500 500 and get a 30 day free trial with a free audiobook and two free Audible originals. Our exploration of the facility begins in the adjacent network of conveyor belts. From here, we hope to find a way into the main buildings. Steps down. Yep. I wonder if it's blocked off on the end of this. I don't think so. Looks like it goes into a big room. This reminds me of a lift hill section for a roller coaster. An abandoned coal mine would be an awesome theme for one. Seems equally gross. Just a world of conveyors. Yeah. Oh, geez. Transport forwarder fuel filter slam. <laughs> That's probably horrible pronunciation. We'll have to translate some of this stuff and figure out what it was. More stairs up. Alrighty, that goes really up. The stairs don't even have a railing and they're covered in loose coal. So we're not gonna try these. Too sketchy. I just stepped right here. I went right through. That hole is from my foot. Try not to step on anything metal. Yeah. Stay on the concrete. Oh, this place is sketchy. Crane on rails. Yeah. Ear protection warning in here must have been loud. Is this like a laboratory? It's like a workshop, yeah. With back here looks like a lab maybe. Chemical hood. A fume hood, yeah. Looks like a kitchen, but it definitely wasn't. It was a lab. Yeah. It's just for tireless for sterile environments. Mm-hmm. The size of this place is incredible. This is like heaven. Curve or circle.
The crane comes all the way into this room. That looks like it goes down pretty far. Holy cow. This room is enormous. Wow, look at the minecart. You know what I love about huge industrial sites like this? What? It's just like crazy to think that people made this. Five to six feet tall, little fleshy things, and we're able to build these crazy places to shape the earth however we want. So Brian, show us what happened when you leaned on the railing. Leaning on this was a mistake. <laughs> Got some there. Yeah, I leaned on it too, but not as bad. I knew we were gonna get dirty here. That's why I wore black pants. I don't know what any of that means, but the clock's cool. Christmas decorations. There of course. Always Christmas decorations. Even in places like this, somehow. 100% of the time. Somehow. That's a nice ornament. <laughs> this is the entire staff of everyone that worked at this mine. It seems about right for a facility of this size. Yeah. You require that many people. You got a lot of like office workers, and then you got the people who look like they get a lot more down and dirty. Now this is a set of stairs that I do not want to collapse. I don't see any rust on it though, so I think we're good. Oh, oh. oh my gosh. First place we should go is up here and get a view of this. You know what these remind me of? Hot Wheels boosters. They were probably used as like booster wheels for the minecarts to keep them moving. That is so cool. You know what I think these did? They turn upside down? Yeah, the cart would drive in and it would turn it upside down and dump everything out. Yeah. It says east and west also. There's what one of the carts would have looked like. And I think that rail sticking out at the bottom would have been used to hold it in place when it gets turned upside down. Some pretty long minecarts. This might be the coolest industrial place I've ever seen. Other than the nuclear power plant. I don't think anything will top that. But this is definitely at least second place or tied. Right ahead of us is where carts full of coal would have arrived from underground and then proceeded on to the tippers.
would there be more up even higher? There's a conveyor belt coming through the ceiling. I see. It might go up even higher. Yeah. If not this building, another building. The tracks go around a bend here, and there's also rails on the ceiling, probably for a crane. Automatic and manual mode. And then if you put it in manual, probably. This is manual, I'm guessing. And then you can choose which track they go down. And this is the split right down here. It's a little lift hill here. And the mechanism is exactly like that of a real roller coaster. You got your chain, some anti rollback devices, I'm assuming. Someone ought to make a roller coaster themed to an abandoned coal mine. It would be awesome. This is the first real like vegetation coming inside that I've seen in this area. It's not covered in Like, there's no difference between this and a roller coaster, really. Except maybe a roller coaster's a little more safe. Yes. But the mechanical mechanisms of the lift hill, it's basically exactly the same. Actually, I don't think these were anti-rollbacks. These were probably what literally pushed the car. I don't think the car hooked into the actual chain. It's kind of a sketchy place to walk on this thing. Is there room on the side? Yeah, the, this side looks safer to walk on. Inside this place is just the icing on the top, icing on the cake, too. You know, that really seals the abandoned look, and you have that contrast of man and nature. The cart tracks eventually formed a complete loop, approximately a quarter mile in length. This is a pretty big mine cart right here. This might have been the standard size for all of them, and those might have just been like work carts down there. It makes sense because that's a tall Yeah, and you can fit a lot more coal in a cart this size. Our next objective was to make it to the top of a 230 foot tall head frame. When you think of a head frame, you probably envision the classic image of an angled wooden or steel truss that sits atop a mine shaft. These structures contain a system of motors and pulleys responsible for transporting workers and ore carts in and out of the mine. This is the exact same concept, but taken to the extreme. The scale of this operation required large ore carts, which in turn required larger elevator carriages that could hold multiple carts. Therefore, some seriously heavy-duty equipment was necessary, which we hope to find still inside.
that says. Let's go up though. Okay. Looks cool. Well, we're somewhere. Those are some big doors right there. That does not look like it's going to open at all. There's probably a big crane left at the top of it. Oh, this is not good. Careful. Oh. I don't want to walk on that. Yeah, it's not even. Goes up two, three floors. Holy shit. What? Oh my God. It keeps going up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven floors. We've got a lot of stairs to go up still then. Six floors. Oh, oh my yeah. god. That's an even bigger door. By a little bit, yeah. These are the elevator cars that would have held the mine carts. You can see the tracks for it in there. Holy cow, there's some like big metal looking arms or something in there. I don't know what a storm rector is, but that name sounds cool. But how many more floors do it look like we have? How many more floors does it look like there are? Four. Four? Okay. Here's another view of the lift. Look at that, it's all cut. I wonder what someone used to cut that. I'm sure. So like, how is this staying up here? Probably an emergency break or something. There's some construction around over here. Right? Yeah, this wood I was added in after. So those big metal things I was calling arms before, those were just part of the um, coupling mechanism to couple the elevator cars to the lift cables. That's what it looks like. We must be getting towards the last floor. We have one up a lot of stairs. Holy cow. That's a big wheel. These are the real heavy lifters of the mine, a pair of motors each with their own cable system. In a typical mine, these would be located at ground level and the cables would be aligned with the shaft via a pulley. But for an operation of this scale, it's beneficial to emit the pulley and simply place the motors directly on top of it all. The result is a stunning machine hall located hundreds of feet off the ground. The windows, which let in tons of natural light and provide a fantastic view, are what really make the room feel special. You can see how industrial this area is. So just for some perspective, 
down there is where the minecart tracks were that went in a loop. And now we're all the way up here. This was probably a pretty important position in the mine. Yeah. In charge of lifting all of the stuff out. Unsure of where to head next, we began to wander the endless maze of conveyor belts, hoping they would lead us somewhere new. Eventually it did, but this was by far the most dangerous area we had encountered yet. another big room. This one is in worse shape though. Look at this. That thing is just sitting on the uh, walkway. Look at those stairs right there. These stairs go nowhere. This place is super messed up. There's all kinds of metal just thrown down there. Crazy. There's like massive pieces just thrown everywhere around here. Like that does not look like that is where that actually would have been. But I can't imagine how that would have ended up there. They've like moved to the bottom and then came back up. There we go. <laughs> this is physics class for learning know, about waves know, today. So much fun playing with this. <laughs> After exploring all day, we decided it was finally time to head out. Currently, local officials are in the initial stages of redeveloping the grounds. Some of the buildings on the site have received historic monument status, but the majority of what you saw in this episode will likely be demolished. Thanks to Audible for sponsoring this video. Audible has an unmatched selection of books, news, and other audio content that makes it easy to enjoy no matter what you're doing. If you have a long drive ahead or you're at work and you need something to keep you alert, an audiobook is perfect. If you like our videos, I really recommend you check out Whispering Corridors on Audible. It's about three college students that go inside of an abandoned house to film a documentary, trying to decipher what legends are real and which aren't. 
It's pretty creepy and reminds me of a couple of our videos, so I really think you'd enjoy it. Audible is offering a free audiobook and two Audible originals completely free if you sign up using our link. You'll also be able to keep your library after the trial expires and even if you decide to cancel your membership in the future. Try it today at audible.com slash properpeople or text the code properpeople to 500, 500 for your 30-day free trial.